Before the fistula creation, it's very important to perform a pre-op vessel mapping. And this type of test is very important because it actually allows the doctor to know about patency of the deep venous system if there is any obstructions or stenosis that would affect the volume flow in the dialysis of the arterial system, and also will provide information about the pulmonary arch completeness or dominance to better plan for the dialysis conduit. I know that we've already gone through the Allen's test, but I wanted to also bring it up here too, Jose, for preoperative testing, because I think that it's important to make sure that we do have latency of the pulmonary arch and making sure that there's no issues as uh, AVF or graft placement would occur in the arm. Pretty important to make sure that there's, there's no issues there and that we have a full blood supply. Preoperative testing is very important because actually avoid delay access maturity due to DVT or stenosis or occlusions in the arterial inflow or the venous drainage. Actually, implementation of the pre-op mapping protocols increase the AVF creation rate to a level of exceeding the 50% recommended rate and also avoid the development of tissue edema due to undetected venous thrombosis or arterial stenosis. Before going into the detail of the dialysis access protocol, let's refresh the anatomy of the upper extremity veins. Let's remember that we have a deep in the superficial system, subclavian, axillary, and brachial. Radial and ulnars are considered deep veins, and superficial veins would be the cephalic, basilitic, median cubital. As we know in the venous testing, the compression is the modality of choice to detect deep vein thrombosis. When a vein is fully compressible, that means that there is no DVT. Sometimes a partial occlusive disease will show partial compression with scarring tissue, which is actually possibly recanalized venous thrombosis. Also, symmetrical flow augmentation with distal tissue compression should be documented, and absence of flow augmentation may suggest proximal venous obstruction. It is important to mention that the technologist should note the patient position while examining upper extremity central veins, since examining the patients in sitting position will reduce venous pulsatility and facility. Physiologically, the central veins should demonstrate pulsatile flow, internal jugular veins, brachiocephalic veins, and the proximal supraclavicular veins should be spontaneous, pulsatile, and phasic. Absence of pulsatility or facility may suggest proximal venous obstructions and sometimes involving the superior vena cava if this finding is seen bilateral. As we know, the review in the venous anatomy, the superficial veins are the basilic and the cephalic veins. The basilic veins courses along the medial aspect of the forearms and terminates into the axillary vein. The cephalic vein runs through the lateral aspect of the forearms and terminated into the subclavian vein. And those veins should be examined for patency, size, and the existence of major tributaries. And the measurement should be two millimeters or greater. It is important to remember that the superficial veins tributaries do not steal blood from the main axis as long as the venous outflow is white patent. The blood may be driven to find a way out when the venous outflow is, is obstructed. And it is important to remember that the major point of venous outflow obstructions, including the cephalic arch, the junction of the subclavian vein with the jugular vein, and brachiocephalic vein with the superior vena cava. And now Laura Miller is going to explain venous outflow obstruction. Thanks, Jose. So in the presence of upper extremity venous outflow obstructions in the subclavian vein or and or the brachiocephalic vein, we have to ask the question, 
should the creation of a dialysis access be contraindicated? A lot of times this can lead to some pretty significant complications for our patients. It's important to know whether or not there is an outflow obstruction. So how do you know? Well, obviously we know from review that normal pulsatile flow should be found in the central veins because again, cardiac cycle, we're close to the heart. So there is some normal pulsatility that you're going to find in those central veins. Now, if you have on one side, <laughs> normal flow, and then on the other, you see monophasic or continuous flow, then that should highlight to you that something else is going on and there's possibly an obstruction of flow proximal to this location. So there is an alternative option for patients who do have venous outflow obstructions. Anytime there's venous stenosis or uh, especially central venous stenosis, then salvaging a failing fistula in that case can be difficult. So another option is a surgical option called a herograft. Now, a herograft stands for hemodialysis reliable outflow. And it's really the only fully subcutaneous AV access solution that has been clinically proven at this point to maintain long-term access for hemodialysis patients that do have existing central venous stenosis as well.